Welcome to Any Way You Slice It, where we talk about your identity and purpose in the kingdom of God. Come join author Ricardo Richardson as we slice our way to the core of God's Word to experience the beautiful and transformational discovery of who we are and why we exist, no matter how we slice it. Today's message is, God is the founder and foundation. Beloved family, our text says, The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and those who dwell therein. For he has founded it upon the seas and established it upon the rivers. Psalm 24, 1-2 the Passion Translation puts it this way. God claims the world as his. Everything and everyone belongs to him. He is the one who pushed back oceans to let the dry ground appear, planting firm foundations for the earth. Psalms 24, 1-2 when the God of all creation and King of kings created man, he made him a ruler in the earth. But his rulership and kingship was relegated to the animal kingdom and plant kingdom, but not the kingdom of men. God placed the man there to manage what was founded by God. For the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. God told the prophet Samuel, I am their king, because the people wanted a man to be over them. But when they said, give us a king to lead us. This displeased Samuel. So he prayed to the Lord, and the Lord told him, Listen to all that the people are saying to you. It is not you they have rejected, but they have rejected me as their king. Now listen to them, but warn them solemnly, and let them know that the king who will reign over them will claim them as his rights. Some he will assign to be in charge of his armies, and others to plow his ground and reap his harvest, and still others to make weapons of war and equipment for his chariots. He will take your daughters to be perfumers and cooks and bakers. He will take the best of your fields and vineyards and olive groves and give them to his attendants. He will take a tenth of your flocks, and you yourselves will become his slaves. When that day comes, you will cry out for relief, from the king you have chosen, but the Lord will not answer in that day. But the people refused to listen to Samuel. No, they said, we want a king over us. First Samuel 8. I want us to hear and reflect on the word we just heard. The king, the ruler, will take our sons and make them serve him. He will take our daughters and make them cook and serve at his table. He will tax us to pay his government. He will tax our lands and homes. And if we are unable to pay his taxes, he will seize our homes and property. The king, ruler, and his government will lay heavy burdens and taxes on the people. In other words, he will have dominion over them. This contrasts Genesis 1.26. God says, let them have dominion over the fish, animals, and birds in the earth. What God told the Israelites still applies today. He says, the king shall rule over you and place heavy burdens for you to carry. No wonder King Jesus says, take my yoke upon you and learn from me. I am gentle and lowly in heart and you will find rest for your souls. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. Matthew eleven twenty nine 29 and 30. In our text today, God says the earth and everything in it is mine. But he gave it to man to rule over or to manage. But make no mistake, it is still God's. He is the founder of the earth and the founder of the world and everything in the world, including human beings. But men in the earth have used the resources of God to enslave the people of God and lord it over them. So Jesus tells his disciples, you are to be servant leaders and not lord it over them like the other people do. God owns everything. He owns the air, the sand, the stone, the trees, and everything in the earth. But the God of this world 
wants everything to be about money. In the world today, we respect a founder who has founded a company. We need to understand that we are only managers of what God created. God wants us to set aside resources so that the wealth can become common among others and not be capitalized by one group of people capitalizing over the other. This is why God says, when you give to the poor, you lend to me, even though he understands and he knows everything belongs to him. Beloved family, we need to repent and come back to God. Stop rejecting him and acknowledging him as our king and owner and Lord of everything. And he has the right foundation for everything to be built upon. So when we reject him as king, we are setting ourselves up on the wrong foundation. Beloved family. He wants to give us the authority to co-rule and manage with him, but not to take the resources for ourselves and not build up the kingdom and not share it with others in need. The wise builders built on rock solid foundation. And when the wind and rain comes, even in a flood, the house stands firm. God has the right foundation. So let's repent. And let's declare today that King Jesus is our King so that we can build on the right foundation. The foundation that has already been laid is King Jesus Christ. So build on the right foundation so that when the storms of life come, the founder will establish and keep you in perfect peace. Much love.